Hi there. Uh, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Uh, we left off uh, at the end of I don't know. If it's, I don't know if it's gonna be the first day of investigation or if there's gonna be a part two to that. But we left off with some depressing, uh, well, you know, stuff since our dear pal Zado is to be leaving for Japan. Plus, you know. <laughs> We got like a whole ass trial to deal with. And uh I can probably assume that Von Van Zykes is probably gonna be there too, you know. And he's always a joy, am I right? When I awoke the following morning, Suzato Son was already gone. Outside the window. The rain came down in sheets. When so began, an even longer day than the last, one that I would remember for the rest of my days. Hmm. Yeah, here we are, back in court. Uh, good morning, Tina. Oh, come on. I'm determined to prove your innocence today. I'm sure we can do it. Oh, so what is your friend doing? Sorry. You know, out in a fancy dress. Cesaro, or however you say it. I don't know. Bro, didn't you hear it yesterday? She said she was going to be leaving, I believe. Didn't, didn't she tell you that? Ah. Miss Cesaro had to leave early this morning. She was already gone by the time I woke up. You're all right with, with that, are you? Forget about me if you like. And go and see her off. I mean, yeah, she's already, I'm pretty sure she's already, uh, already gone by now, but, you know, thanks for the offer. It's fine. It's not as though Mrs. Artu and I won't meet again one day. No, sorry, my voice. Um, uh, me voice acting might not be uh, super on par. I haven't quite warmed up. E even so, but you, Gina, you only get one chance. This trial today is all we have. Good morning, you two. Whoever that is, is that Iris? Oh, hey, it's Iris. Sick. And you brought the key. I already made you like ten times better in my book. Oh, wait, fuck. Uh, I missed something. I forgot something. Oh well. Normally I have a timer to let me know, uh, you know, how, how long the recording's going, but I forgot to set it before starting, so I guess we're just trying to play it by ear. Hope I don't go over it out, you know, an hour. <laughs> how are you feeling, Jenny? Did you manage to sleep? Meow. Now that's a real homie right there. My boy Waga High. I wish I could be defending him for murder. That'd be pretty cool. Oiris! What are you doing here? What do you mean? When a friend is in need, we show our support. Isn't that right, Waggy? Meow. Meow. Oh, I guess he was like... <laughs> I guess he didn't agree with you, uh, Iris. He had places to be. Ah, uh, Wacky! <laughs> Great way to show your support, kitty. Hey, you know how cats are, you know. They're pretty fickle. Ah, uh, that mama knows around. What arm can it do? 
Oh, that reminds me. I brought a paper on the way here. Now, would you like the good news or the bad news? Also, before I consider news, let me check this out again. Mason Milverton, Brickmaker, East End, our boy Magnus. Hmm. What do you say, Runo? Jenny? Oh, uh, well, I think I'd rather get the badges out of the way first. Nah, always take the good news first. <laughs> you might not live to hear the bad. Ah, uh, yes. That question always gives away people's personalities. Let's not go there. Alright then, I'll give you the bad news first. A record amount of rain has fallen this morning, and carriages all over the capital are struggling to move. Huh? The bad news was a weather report? So I hope that Susie made a train to Dover, and that the train isn't delayed on its way to the port. Gosh, yes. All right then. So what's what's the good news? Well, the rain the rain is forecast to subside this afternoon. So even if the train is delayed, it should be able to make the time up later. Well, that is good news, isn't it? I mean, it's neutral really at best. I'm going to give a monkey's really. If only all good news cancelled out the bad. And look, this trial has made the headlines too. Podbroker perishes and pick purse plunder. S -s See? <laughs> I do like that. What? Let them say what they want. See if I can. I can't because you're covering your face. Don't worry! Runa will soon show everyone that this headline is nonsense. I, I will. And then, in tomorrow's papers, the headlines will be... Discharge Diver is Dauntless Do-Gooder. Isn't that right, Runo? Oh, um, yeah. Let's hope so. Yeah, totally. I'm just, I, mean, ugh, I mean, yeah. Uh -huh. Of course they will. I have absolute faith in you. How was that? I was trying to sound like Susie. Did it work? Did it? I mean, not bad, I guess, but you know, it's hard to it's hard to top it's hard it's hard to top Cesaro. It's like she was still here. Oh, I, okay. I guess I guess it's evidence now. Good luck, then, Bruno. I'll do what I can. Hmm? Obviously, I don't know the law like Susie does, but still. I can shoot some motherfuckers. I'll be by your side the whole time, giving you moral support and encouragement. I'm not sure that big thing is as comforting as you think it is, to be honest, but thank you, Iris. It's very kind of you. Oh yeah, Iris. Yes, Jenny? Well, I was wondering, is all, about the Holmes. Uh, did they fix them up alright? Ah, uh, yes. The operation was a great success, but... Hurley still hasn't come around yet. Jesus. <laughs> Are you sure they didn't fucking, uh... Give them coma juice? And so, you know, they, they, they mix up their anesthetic with the coma juice? Eh? I've asked a friend of mine at Scotland Yard to send a telegram as soon as he wakes up. I'm sure Gregson will let us know the moment there's news. Oh, right. 
no Tazato-san, and no Mr. Shulge. It's all down to me today to prove that Gina is innocent of this crime. And Miss Gina Lestrade, Counsel for Defense, the trial is about to begin. Please make your way into the courtroom. It's time then. Ah, uh, yes. Let's go, Gina. Iris. Lead the way, Runo! Oh, poor Gina. She's trying to put on a brave face, but I can tell she's worried and scared. I have to believe in her from start to finish. That's a weapon that will secure our victory here. Much like it did when I believed Magnus McGilded. It didn't backfire at all. But I, I get it. At the end of the day, you still have to believe in your client, for better or worse. If I learned anything from my great friend, it's that. Yeah, Cosimo was pretty based. Alright, 10, 10 a.m., the old Bailey courtroom. Of course it's Van Zyke's. But today with her majesty and queen, I hope I declare this court will be in session. This trial for determine the guilt or innocence of Miss Vino Sprayed. I now call upon the council for prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. Oh god, this voice again. The prosecution is ready. The defense is ready. But Lord Van Dykes, uh, my lord. Remind me, but how many years ago was it that you withdrew from the public prosecution service? It was some five years ago, my lord. Yes, and two months ago, we were first. You were at this somewhat unexpectedly, and here you are again today. Are there some circumstances in which the court should be aware that have led to this uh, erratic behavior? I mean, there was also the, the Sezeki trial, you know, in between. Can't forget about that. In what, some, in what one might describe as your former life five years past, you dealt exclusively in matters concerned with the highest echelons of society and government. Really? Yet today, you chose to try a simple case of burglary and murder. I confess I find it both a little befuddling, Council. Yeah, what do you got to say for yourself, Von Zeeks? There are two types of person I cannot abide. Firstly, those wealthy scoundrels who hide behind a mask of philanthropy to cheat the public at large. He means Mr. McGilded, who you defended against the Reaper two months ago. Yes, I'd uh, just about managed to work that one out. Thank you. Magnus McGilded. If I'd known what a monster he was, I never would have defended him. Hey, I mean, even the guilty need a, deserve a fair defense, you know. And secondly, even more loathsome. Those wily scoundrels who masquerade as allies only to effect total betrayal in the final hour. In other words, the confidence tricksters from those tiny islands in the Far East. The Nipponese! Oh wow, just fucking being blatantly racist, I see. What? Did he really just say that? He means you now, Runo. Oh, like, I didn't fucking know. I actually managed to work that one out too. No. Thank you, Iris. Total betrayal? What are you talking about? That torrid look of hatred in Lord Van Zeke's eyes. Was that directed solely at me? Or was he talking about all Japanese people? I don't know, man. He, he did say he did say anyone from the islands of the Far East. So he was speaking in pretty broad terms, I, w I, would, I would say. Ah, we're an alarmingly scathing explanation, Lord Van Zeeks. Today, uh, Kodisha, I welcome to return the so-called Reaper the Bailey, feared by all London's malefactors. Uh, 
Your lordship is too kind. <laughs> now, uh, Doris, uh, since you have been selected at random to represent the will of the people in this trial, are you ready to hear the evidence placed before you and determine the guilt or innocence of the defendants? Oh, hey, it's, uh, John Garadev. Former lieutenant... Oh, wait, I'm trying to get the voice. <clears throat> yeah, former lieutenant in the British Army here, don't you know? Chaps like me were born ready. Clean cockery... Not cockery, Jesus. Clean crockery, clean cutlery, and a clean conscience. His lordship's motto is very appropriate here, I think. Jeez. Look at... I guess I guess you got you get called for jury duty pretty often, huh? Everything will be stereoscopic in the future. Absolutely, absolutely everything, and I'm ready for it. I don't understand it. I can't have left it in here. It's not possible. But could I have? Oh, hey, it's the old guy from before, and he's dressed up like a doctor. And also, this lady with the telegram. I think it turned. Yeah, telegram machine. Uh, hello again. Uh, let's see. The women indispensable in society. Stop. A female centric future awaits. Stop. Oh, hi there. Oh, yeah, isn't that. Hey, that, that's a. Uh... We have villain Bolshevik from back in case two, that res that Russian revolutionary who was coming to London. Good day. I am visiting London for sightseeing. I would like to take bus to Crystal Tower, please. Is something wrong, you know? Oh, well, not exactly. It's just. I'm fairly sure I recognize these jurors. Almost all of them, in fact. Yeah, in fact, yeah, I'm pretty sure we, yeah, we, we dealt with, we, well, we've really seen uh, almost everyone here, except for that dude in the middle. Really? Funny coincidence, coincidences like that do happen from time to time, don't they? Huh, but it is quite strange. The jurors have chosen at random from London's six million inhabitants, you know. Yeah, I mean, what are the odds that, like, three of the six people there, wait, are, like, people who have also been chosen for my other trial, so, and, uh, also, yeah, Garadab was, he wasn't a juror, but he was involved in my last case, and, yeah, weird. <clears throat> so I've been led to believe, yeah, but something tells me I'm being duped. Very well. Uh, now, uh, Brother Van Dykes, the court calls upon prosecution to introduce the facts of the case. As you wish, my lord. <laughs> Allow me to begin with a word of warning to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. In short, there has never been a more self-evident case of cold-blooded murder. Uh, duh, doy. The victim. Mr. Pop Windebank, proprietor of a pawn drop on Baker Street, was shot from behind and died instantly. The prosecution presents this photographic print of the crime scene. Yeah, that's, that, that's him, all right. That's what we saw with our own eyes. As the court would observe, there is a single bullet wound just below the gentleman's left shoulder. The evidence suggests that the bullet pierced the man's heart, resulting in instant death. Oh yeah, I guess your heart is more on the left side of your body, not like the center. Moving on to the findings of Scotland Yard's coroner. His report states that the bullet entered the body on a rising diagonal trajectory. And, uh, what's that supposed to tell us? It means... The victim was likely shot by someone significantly shorter in height than himself. Bro, was it... Was it Magnus McGilded? Come back from the dead? To, to kill some more uh, uh, random dudes? 
someone, uh, uh, someone like the accuser, you might say. Oh, dear. The prosecution wishes to present the autopsy report and the crime scene photograph as evidence, my lord. Uh, indeed, uh, the court accepts. Hand them to the bailiff, please. Well, okay, yeah, uh, uh, that all that all seems cricket to me. I now ask the court to turn its attention to this plan of the establishment where the incident occurred. The proprietor was found in the storeroom where he keeps where he kept articles upon to him. A windowless room with a single point of entry. A door to the main shop that was found locked. In this sealed chamber, there were only two persons present. The victim, Mr. Winterbank, and the accused. Go, uh. It may further interest the court to know that when the accused was discovered at the scene, she had in her hand the gun used to fire the fatal bullet. Well, uh, that's that then, isn't it? Nothing more to say. Isn't that grubby little girl a pickpocket anyway? She's one of those filthy drafts that lives in the slums in the East End. Oh well, it's only a matter of time if she got blood on her hands then. <laughs> what is your... Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. We can't jump to conclusions here. We mustn't assume her guilt because of what she has to do to survive. My learned Nipponese friend. <laughs> it is you who mustn't jump to conclusions. The prosecution has barely begun presenting its case. Oh? Conveniently, this appalling act of murder did not go unobserved. There were witnesses. Sorry. A oh, good gracious! After the testimony, this girl's true nature will be exposed. Pitiful pit purse, or cold-hearted killer. Here's to establishing the truth. Um, the court will take the floor plan and fire arm into evidence. Hand them to the bailiff, please, Lord Van Zeeks. At once, my lord. Okay, we're at least we're getting some more evidence on our side. Well, this isn't good. I feel like the mood in here has turned very gloomy all of a sudden, Reno. I think, uh... Well, that's because it has. Oh, shit, he's already throwing his cape to the wind. Maybe we just, we just barely got started. Let us begin! Bring forth the witnesses to the foul murder of Mr. Pop Windebank on the 16th of April of this year. Pop Windebank. Wait, I thought his name was Hatch. Wait, was it Pop? Or was it Hatch? Oh yeah, I guess it was Pop. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting my names mixed up. Oh, hello. Oh hi, you 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 were there too, Gregson. Y you saw what happened. I mean, okay. Witnesses, state your name and occupations for the court. Uh, let's see. Name's Nash Skulkin. Occupation is um, uh, body, professional body. Name's Rico Skulkin. Um, occupation um, uh, same as them. Tobias Gregson, um, Scotland Yard Inspector. Uh, that's right. We're what they call the Scree Skulking Brothers. Uh, I'm sorry, three? Uh, you're a Skulking too? Uh, what? Huh? 
you looking at me like that for? I don't lock me in with you, Law. Yeah. Hey, cool, blind me. That's cold. <laughs> don't you know what, what we're going through? It's our older bruv. Most contacted with it we have. So we scoured every shade of cold in the capital. And in last night, we come across you. Very spit of the bloke. Ain't that right, Ringo? He is, Nash. He is. The very spit of him. So, <laughs> uh, so we decided then and there what we was going to do. We was going to call you. Big Bruv Skulky. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Big Bruv Sulky. Ah, come on. Leave it out, you two. Sulky Skulkin? And that's before he's run out of chips. Uh, well then, uh, Inspector Sulky Gregson. <laughs> Begging your pardon, my lord, but the name's Tobias. What I would like to know, Inspector, is what you are doing in the witness stand. The Skulkin brothers are currently under arrest, my lord, on suspicion of theft. Hmm. Thieves they are, they, these three. <laughs> uh, no, my lord. <laughs> Begging your pardon, but please don't let me in with this lot. Two nights ago, these two brothers illegally entered an establishment with a tip to burgle. And in the course of their nefarious activities, they became embroiled in a far more sinister crime. By Jove, you mean to say, what an extraordinary coincidence. Indeed, my lord. While attempting to burglarize a pawnbrokery, they witnessed its proprietor's murder. Are you sure? Because, like, I feel like the more obvious conclusion... Are you sure? Okay, I'm just saying, like, if they were already there doing a crime, like, shouldn't they be considered suspects, too? You know? Hey, look at that. He's sitting on a box. Or standing on a box because he's so short. Order! Order! The various trespasses of these brothers is not the subject of today's proceedings. Though they will naturally face trial in the very near future. Now, with your lordship's permission, uh, I'd like to remain in the stand to keep these chits on straight and narrow. Of course, but the. What exactly you saw? Happy to. Cause the skulkin's never sulkin. Wait, sorry, sorry. Cause the skulkin's never skulkin. Get out of it. Jeez. Illegal entry. We was walking down Baker Street in the small hours, and the gas door was ajar, see? It was like some kind of sign. Begging us for to go in, it was. Yeah, but once we got inside, I caught blimey love it. We had a gun shop in the back room. We went to see what was what, but the door was locked from the inside. We never done nothing, Governor. We never took nothing. We just left after that uh, nice and quiet. coincidence, it would seem. At the precise moment these miscreants entered the property, an even more sinister crime was afoot. The witness's testimony... Oh, the witness's testimony is consistent with the crime scene in every detail. The door providing access to the storeroom of the main door in shop was indeed locked from the inside. And within, 
Only the victim and the accused were found. Hmm. I must say, it does appear to be an overwhelmingly simple case. Today, well, the defense may cross examine the witnesses now, of course. Uh, counsel, if you please. Counsel? Ah, erm, um, yes. What's the matter, Runo? Sorry, I, uh... I was just stunned into a silence, into silence for a minute, for the blatant lies being told by that pair in the stand. I know that's all nonsense, because I saw it with my own eyes. Oh yeah, we did. We, we when we came in, that, that like they're the ones who shot Hol Sholmes, and they didn't even mention that. Like they didn't even mention that they fucking shot Hardlock. Like what the fuck? I'll just have to expose that testimony for the pack of lies it is. Yeah, fucking uh, Wario and uh, Waluigi over there. Hmm. Okay, well, because, again, I forgot to set a proper timer for this one, I don't want to, like, end up going super long or going over. So, this might be a sh end up being a shorter episode, but, uh, leaving off at, like, the first testimony proper, that seems as good as place as any, right? So, uh, that, yeah, why not? These guys seem pretty, uh, sus. I mean, we know they're sus, because, again, we, we, we saw them shoot Herlock and shit, yo. Like, come on. <clears throat> but I'm curious to see what else, like, they were doing. Because I feel like, I don't think they were just there to, you know, I, I you know. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually stole some important shit, you know, like the box. Remember that small box that we couldn't find? I wouldn't be surprised if they stole it, you know. But we'll deal with that and cross that bridge when we get to it in the next episode. But uh, until then, I'll uh, see you around.